crawly. It's a creepy crawly ant. That's what Mr. Ossing says in this story. He's the math teacher down the stairs from my classroom and he's terrified of creepy crawlies. Mr. Ossing's house is an ant infestation. There's even an ant spinning around on a CD player. He opens that thing up, uh, change out the disc, put on some cool jazz, and ah, an ant. He runs off terrified and his, his, uh, his wife comes in to see what the, what is the matter uh, and just sees this ant having fun on the CD and, and starts watching. So she measures the ant is 12 centimeters from the center uh, of the CD, which is where it's, the spinning is centered. Uh, so our first question here, what is the size of one radian? Okay, so as that ant goes around on the CD, it turns into a giant red blur, making a circle. Uh, I've got the radius drawn on there. That's our 12 centimeters. And we know that a radius is the defined size of a radian. So if you imagine, we're looking like uh, at a graph, kind of at a weird angle, but if we start from that blue radius I just drew, an arc length, like that, that is the exact same size as the radius. That is one radian. So the angle created between the blue and green radii there, that creates an arc length, which is defined as a radian. The length of a radian is the same as the length of a radius. So one radian is 12 centimeters, just like the radius is 12 centimeters. It's the definition of a radian. Second question. The ant spins around a total distance of 300 centimeters around the outside edge of that circle. We want to know what angle did the ant rotate through measured in radians. All right, so to our notes page. Our notes are described in terms of speeds, but all of these concepts, rotational speed, angular speed, linear speed, those concepts really are not defined just as a speed. We can also use them to talk about distances. So you could have like an angular distance, a linear distance, uh, a rotational distance even. So to get from a linear distance, that's the 300 centimeters that the ant spins, and convert from the, the bottom down there up to an angular distance measured just in radians, we can use the same conversion factor though that is given uh, between angular and linear. We'll just change all the words from speed to distance. The, re the relationship between them doesn't change. So it's still going to be the length of the radius uh, and the word radius. So I'm going to replace in quotation marks that length of radius with the 12 centimeters for my radius. Right you there. Okay, so that is my conversion factor that one radius is 12 centimeters. I want to make sure the centimeters cancel from the 300 centimeters and the 12 centimeters that is the size of one radian. Centimeters cancel uh, 300 divided by 12 gives me 25 radians. All right, next up, uh, it takes 23 seconds for the ant to do all that spinning. What is its angular speed? Okay, well, we have two options, really. Uh, the first option is kind of the most straightforward here. We just found that it went 25 radians in the last part. Easiest thing to do is to take that 25 radians, divide by the 23 seconds distance, divide by time equals speed, whether it's an angular speed or a linear speed, or rotational speed, whatever. If you take the distance, divide by time, it is the speed. So they're 1.09 radians per second. Uh, next up, what is the linear speed? Um, this is where actually where I was thinking we have two options. So the option number one, uh, I'm going to take that 300 centimeters that was given to me in the original problem divided by 23 seconds distance divided by speed, distance divided by time equals speed. In this case, for number four here, it's a linear speed. For number three, we took an angular distance and divided by time to get an angular speed. Okay, well, for linear speed, we do have an, another option if we could convert the previous answer, we had a number three, that angular speed, 1.09 radians per second up here. We can convert that using the conversion factor, 12 centimeters per radius, and the radians are gonna cancel. In red and green, we're left with centimeters on the top, seconds on the bottom, 1.09 times 12 gives me 13.04 centimeters per second. It's the same answer either way. It really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of what you're more comfortable with as a calculation. So number five, let's get the rotational speed. It's the only speed we haven't calculated yet. So we can get there either from our previous answer, the linear speed, or if we wanted to go back further, we can take our answer to number three, that angular speed and convert it. We're gonna use different conversion factors for each. I'll show you both. So for option A, we're gonna to need to know what is the circumference 
So 2 times pi times the radius, 2 times pi times 12, 75.4 centimeters. That's one trip all the way around the CD. And so I'm going to use that as my conversion factor. I took the linear speed from question four, that 13.04 centimeters per second, multiplied by the conversion factor of one revolution and 75.4 centimeters. I got 0 0.17 revolutions per second. Which, if I'm thinking about a CD player, I'm pretty sure that they rotate faster than that. But these are the numbers that we were given to work with. Option B is going to give us the same answer, but instead of starting from this purple linear speed, I'm going to use the uh, the blue angular speed from question three and the conversion factor uh, from angular speed to rotational speed is one revolution and two pi radians. And that gives me the same answer. So it's just a matter of preference which one you want to work from.